this morning, uh, would you go with us to the book of Mark? Mark, the fifth chapter. Mark, chapter five. Fifth chapter of Mark. Our reading will begin at the 21st verse. Standard Version, Mark chapter 5, verse 21. And when Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered about him, and he was beside the sea. What chapter 4 shows us, at the end of it, Jesus had crossed over from Capernaum and went over to Judea. Now leaving from the region of Judea and making his way back to uh, Capernaum. So as he does this, there's this huge crowd that follows him. What's important to remember um, from this is that when he crossed over the first time, uh, Jesus was asleep on the boat. So keep that in mind. Jesus was sleeping. The disciples um, woke him up. Hallelujah when they crossed over. Now, he's crossing over again. This crowd's following him, but keep in mind, Jesus was asleep and they woke him up in chapter four. Now, verse 22. Then came one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name, and seeing him, he fell at his feet, it's Jesus' feet, and employed him earnestly saying, my little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her so that she may be well and live. And he went with him. And a great crowd followed him and thronged about him. And there was a woman who had a discharge of blood for 12 years. 12 years. And you know that story. She comes up behind him. She presses in the crowd, touches the fringe uh, of his talit, which is the rigid the prayer shawl, she touches the hem, that, that's the translation here in the garment, and immediately she was made whole. Um, the, the, everybody was there, Jesus turns about, and uh, he wants to know who touched her, who touched him, the disciples are saying, Lord, you tell the people, and it could be anybody, and uh, Jesus is specifying that this is a particular touch, not just someone, because the crowd is touching him, this is someone that's looking for something. Keep in mind, she came looking looking um, and uh, she had this issue for 12 years and she's whole so Jesus says daughter your faith has made you well verse 35 while he was speaking he's talking to the woman while he was speaking there came from the ruler's house that's Jairus some who said your daughter is dead why trouble the teacher or the master any further but overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the ruler of the synagogue, do not fear, only believe. And he allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James, John, the brother of James. They came to the house of the ruler of the synagogue, and Jesus saw a commotion. Hallelujah. People were weeping and wailing loudly. And when he entered, he said unto them, why are you making a commotion and weeping? And he says that to the woman. The child is not dead, but sleeping. Uh, yeah, because sometimes we carry on a fit. We're making a commotion. We want to know, well, why, why are you acting that way? Everything's under control. Hallelujah. No, notice what they did. They laughed at him, but uh, he put them all outside took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went in where the child was. Sometimes uh, when there's unnecessary um, distraction, uh, hallelujah, we gotta, sometimes we got to eliminate the noise. Sometimes our, our ears are so cluttered with stuff that's going on, you really can't hear from God. And um, there's so many negative people that's talking into your ear, you can't expect the break. 
says, some people you just got to go and get out. And I went and got out. And it's like, hallelujah. It's just too, too much negative energy coming at you at this time. No, the great's about to come. And as long as you are speaking negative to me, then we, God can't, can't move. So he goes in and he took the, her, the daughter, by at the hand and said to her, Talitha Kuma. Arabic, which means, little girl, I say to you, arise. And immediately the girl got up and began walking. Notice that. She got up immediately and started walking. And uh, for she was 12 years of age. Isn't that interesting? In verse 25, the woman gets your brother's 12. This girl is 12. And they immediately, uh, they were immediately overcome with amazement. And he strictly charged them that no one should know this told them to give her something to eat. So she needed to be revitalized. She needed to be um, nourished. Um, points of, of reference for this scripture are these. And that's verse 23. Uh, Jairus is coming and he says, my daughter is at the point of death. Come lay your hands on her that she may live. Jesus went. Verse 25, there's a woman with the issue of blood for 12 years, 12 years, and she's made whole. Um, verse 35, uh, someone comes and says, your daughter's dead, don't trouble the master. Jesus says, don't be afraid or don't fear, um, but only believe. And uh, verse 41, Jesus took her by the hand and, uh, and says to her, uh, little girl, arise, or Talitha Kuma. Uh, I want to talk about these words uh, to God and say, Lord, I mean, come on, let's say it to God like you want him to do it. Lord, Lord wake me up. Wake me up. Let's do that again. Lord, Lord wake me up. Wake me up. Let's pray. Wake me up. Lord, don't pass me by. I want to see right before my eyes wake me up Lord don't pass me by don't leave me sleeping open up my eyes Lord wake me up wake me to see your arrival is right before my eyes wake me up Lord don't pass me by don't leave me sleeping open up my talk to you about the awakening, and uh, more pointedly, I want to speak my thought, Lord, wake me up, or wake me up. <clears throat> it is time to awaken out of sleep. It's time for the church, the body of Christ, to wake up and be aroused, to be stirred. Romans, the 13th chapter, verses 11 and 12 say this, and that knowing the time, that now it is high time 
to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. Since the night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on, he says, the armor of light. It's time for the church, the body of Christ, to get up and begin to move and act right now. Before it is too late, the Lord has given a call out to his church. He is stirring his people to an awareness before he comes, lest his coming startle you. The Lord will startle those who are not looking for him, those who are not expecting him, or should I better say, Someone who is not watching the signs. Isn't it interesting? When you expect someone uh, to come, when there are signs, you can hear them. When they enter the room, you're not startled. However, if someone creeps up on you, there's no noise. There's no sign of their coming. Or you don't expect them then when they appear, they'll often startle you. Hallelujah. Paul is telling the church that we must know the time. The Bible tells us in Chronicles that the sons of Issachar, they understood the time, and they knew what Israel ought to do, which means, the sons of Israel, they watched the seasons, and they discovered the patterns and the movements of government in relation to prophecy. So they were able to tell Israel what they should be doing in that hour. Paul says to us that we are to know the time. The word for know is to perceive or to discern. The word for time is season. So essentially, Paul is saying to us that we must discern, we must perceive what season it is. Hallelujah. Just as in uh, about 20 or less than 20 days from now, uh, we will officially be into summer. And uh, it appeared as if while we were going through the month of, of May, our weather seemed a little iffy. Uh, and uh, you know, some days it, it uh, was in 70s, uh, almost 80s, and the very next day it'd be 50 some degrees. Uh, it's real interesting the, the pattern and the movement of, of the weather during that time. So one day people were um, putting on ladies sundresses and sandals and people were wearing shorts and the next day they had to grab the light jacket or, or, or sweater because it was, it was cold and then that one day that one day it was uh, got down to 30 some uh, that night so there were a few of us who turned the heat on <laughs> bless his name because uh, we knew that was a contrary spirit hallelujah But the, the, so the, uh, our expectation, but it was something as last week started to unfold and the weather uh, started to change. I, I, I muse over the fact that as I noticed the uh, temperature increasing outside, I saw uh, people's clothing start to change. And there was this excitement you know, where, where people were uh, joyous once again to to get outside, and, and uh, it's amazing, it's amazing. The nail salon uh, became uh, full because uh, people before, <laughs> hallelujah, before in the winter, they, they weren't so much concerned about the pedicure, but they knew summer was coming. Bless Jesus, and I'll just, anyways, they knew summer was coming, and so they decided they, they had to go and uh, get a pedicure so that their, their feet, would look nice and when it's time for 
uh, the weather changed. And so when they, when they were wearing the, the open-toed shoes that uh, someone would laugh at, at them because uh, their, their, their feet weren't uh, properly uh, taken care of. But, but uh, the sign that uh, it, the weather was changing was the increasing uh, of temperature. And many of you uh, chose your outfits today based on the fact uh, of the, the temperature uh, outside. You, you knew not to wear uh, what you would normally wear uh, in January because the, the temperature changed. Well, what's interesting is that uh, we are able to perceive the seasons uh, and we adapt to the changes in the season because we know if we wear what we wore in January uh, and we wear that in June, July, and, and August, uh, we'll uh, uh, sweat profusely uh, outside. So uh, we have to change, bless his name, according to season. Pastor, what are you saying? I'm saying this, is that if you understand the season that we're in, if you can perceive the season that the church uh, is in, then you will move from being lackadaisical in your approach to God because you know that based on the season, this is not the time to play with God. It's not the time uh, to play with God. And what's really interesting is that uh, we are more perceptive uh, about our natural environments uh, and we are less perceptive about the movement of, of the spirit. Uh, however, uh, the signs are pointing to the fact that Jesus is on his way. Uh, the, the scene, brothers and sisters, it has, has changed and uh, it has set the uh, groundwork already in place for the coming uh, of the Lord Jesus Christ. For you churchmen, uh, you must understand that the news is not going to broadcast that this is the Antichrist. You've got to get that understanding. They're not going to broadcast that this is a one world system as we know it. But when you start hearing talks about a new world order, uh, when you start hearing conversation uh, about a, a currency, one form of currency that can be used globally when we hear uh, of wars and, and rumors uh, of wars, when we see uh, that there are, are, are earthquakes in various places uh, and there are uh, changes in the climatic uh, system, when, when we're seeing these things take place, when, when we see that there is an increase uh, of agnosticism and atheism, uh, in the church, the Bible, in the world, the Bible tells us, brothers and sisters, that there are many antichrists that are in the world speaking currently. And if you read the text carefully, it also says that, that they were once with us, but left out from us. Brothers and sisters, what is that saying? That presents or shows that they used to uh, go to church, they they, they had faith in God, but there would be a falling away. Glory to Jesus. And the Bible points that out. That in the last days, people would depart from the faith that they were once singing, Oh, how I love Jesus. And the next moment, they begin to deny the very existence of who he is. Uh, the Bible tells us in Romans chapter 1, professing themselves to be wise, they became foolish or their own hearts were darkened. Please get this. Professing themselves to uh, be, that is to exist as wisdom or, be to, or to be intellectual, he says, they became darkened, that is to be depraved. Please get it professing themselves to be intellectuals, he says, to exist as an intellectual. They became depraved. If you are astute to the, to the era that we're living in, 
this is a, an information era. Uh, and I just, I, I, I love the time. It's amazing to see uh, how much information that's out there. We can uh, chart and see that the intelligence of a child today is different from uh, the 50s and the 60s and 70s. The, the rate by which they learn uh, is uh, much faster. Uh, we've understood the concepts of uh, visual and auditory perception. We understand how to stimulate the mind uh, with various colors and objects. And so we wire that into uh, our technology and uh, our children then are able to perceive information faster than we did. And so uh, you give them an iPad, you give them uh, a tablet or a phone, and they can go through and work uh, the those components where uh, some who are a little older in age are still trifling over the concept. How do they do that? How do they get uh, to there? And it's uh, uh, really amazing to see uh, their movement and their uh, the success rate. And uh, as you see uh, how the brain is uh, progressing and how intellectual we have become in our desire to be rational people, we have factored out the concept of fidelity, which is faith. Uh, in our idea to understand factual logistical concepts, we have excluded the possibility of something supernatural because we have become a such intelligent people. Then the Bible goes on to talk about that be a, a disintegrating of the family structure, the family units. Uh, if you've been around a while, then you are able to clearly see that uh, the divorce rate, they say today, uh, is at up to at least 50%, which means that uh, the idea is half of the people that uh, uh, get married uh, will end up in divorce. Half of the people, which would mean then if I were to base that on statistics, then half of the, the marriages in this church. This is what statistics are, are telling us, and I don't want to get too deep, deep into your business, but I uh, uh, I can, I already know, you know, and, and uh, if you're living in, the, in today's society, uh, and because the Lord has called me to be a seer, and uh, I see all kind of things when I come out here, uh, I, I can tell uh, when there is dysfunction in uh, relationships, bless Jesus. Uh, and, and so it, it's interesting to see the time uh, in which we are, are, are living in. Uh, and as all this happens, uh, the Bible says for the church that they would have a form of godliness, a form of godliness. And please understand that when Paul is writing that, he's not speaking to unbelievers. He's not saying that unbelievers would have a form of godliness. He's talking to the church. He says that the church would have a formality as it relates to being godly, but they would deny the power thereof. What are you saying? Is that they would do church, but they would not have the church in them. Glory to Jesus. Brothers and sisters, I am all in for doing things smarter and doing things better and doing things faster. But there is an art that uh, our forefathers had that we've missed, and that is waiting on God. Hallelujah. Uh, they would come to church and they would pray and uh, in their praying, they would say that we're going to wait on God. Uh, what they meant by that is we're, we're going to tarry a, a little while. The thought, the concept was, uh, I'm not going to just get on my knees and just throw a prayer out there uh, and, uh, uh, and just believe that as, as soon as I throw it, God's going to uh, speak. Their thought was, uh, I'm going to stay here until he says something. 
uh, the thought was, uh, I'm going to commune with God until uh, he moves or until he speaks. And, uh, they, they had, there was a power. I don't know if we just tell the truth, but they had a power back then that uh, is often uh, almost non-existent today. Glory to Jesus. There was a power that existed then. They may not have been able to understand all the Greek and all of the Hebrew or the Aramaic. They may not have understood uh, customs and, and uh, are able to relate and, and interchange archaeological finds. Uh, but they did know this, that if you call on Jesus, hallelujah, that Jesus would answer prayer. Uh, they knew that if you uh, pray a while and, uh, and stay there, God would say something. There was a level of discernment, bless his name, that they had then that we miss today. Hallelujah. Uh, we're so busy trying to discern uh, somebody else's business, and we're missing what God is saying. There was an discernment about them that when they say that you came in the room, they'd say, now, something wrong, baby, where you been? Uh, and uh, they would be, uh, they, they tell you, no, something not right. Uh, there's some sin uh, that's there. And uh, they'd say, no, we're going to wait here until the, that thing is broken. Glory to God. Uh, but brothers and sisters, uh, uh, because of our intelligence, uh, we don't even bless anymore when we sin. Glory to Jesus. What do you mean by that, Pastor? I mean that there is no more conviction. My Shabbat. No more conviction uh, uh, about what we do anymore. We used to be conscious about uh, uh, what we said and where we went and who we were with. And, and we were conscious about how long we stayed out. And, uh, you know, there was a, a level of consciousness there. And, uh, but uh, for one reason or, or another, uh, we've lost that level of discernment. But God is stirring his church. There is a movement of righteousness that is uh, beginning to increase in the church. God is awakening, stirring people, just like during the days of Josiah. And he's calling them to uh, uh, repent and to uh, seek the first things of God. Brothers and sisters, the night is almost over. It is midnight for the church. It is uh, an hour of darkness. But the Bible says that at midnight, there's a cry that's made. And the cry was to the attendants, that is, to wake up, for the bridegroom cometh. Please understand this. The reading in Matthew 25, verses 1 through 13, about the ten virgins, at midnight when they cried, the cry was not to wake up, start getting dressed. The bridegroom is on his way. The reading says, wake up, the bridegroom's here. Glory to Jesus. That's the thought that be stirred now, be dressed right now. The bridegroom is just outside the door. Can I tell you, it's midnight and there is a cry that's me being made today. And the cry is, get dressed. The king is just outside the door. Hallelujah. He is on his way, and he's looking for a church that has made herself ready. Uh, he's looking for a people who has uh, uh, looked at and considered the changes in the time, seeing the movement and the increase of of the world system and seeing that the church has lost a level of influence. But for Christ to come, the church must be awake because he cannot marry a dormant or a dead bride. Hallelujah. He has to have a bride that is active and productive. Please get this as well. And the bride has to be fertile. She cannot be sterile. She cannot be barren. The bride 
has to be fertile. Glory to Jesus. So what I mean by that, uh, brothers and sisters, remember, you are the church is the bride of Christ, is the bride of Christ. And if we are the bride of Christ, uh, in the Jewish customs, the uh, groom would come take the bride. They'd consummate the marriage. The thought was, which is why when you read the Old Testament, there was great pressure on, on young ladies uh, to be fertile. Great pressure on them. And the thought was that if I cannot conceive, then there is a curse that's on me. So they would often implore the Lord that he would lift the curse from them to remove their barrenness so that they might be able to produce. Please get this. As the church, the bride of Christ, and we are to marry Christ, then there has to be a product of the relationship between the church and Christ. Please get that. The church must produce for Jesus, and the church must carry the seed of Jesus. The church must produce for Jesus, and the church must uh, carry the seed of Jesus. That being said, let's journey through some scripture. Isaiah 66, you will note this, verses 7 through 9. Before, now when you read Isaiah 60, starting at verse chapter 60, or actually chapter 40, there's a change. Comfort ye, comfort ye, and speak comfortably. And he speaks about the change of uh, the word and the change that's in the church or the world. Notice there's 66 books, 66 chapters in the book of Isaiah. There's 66 uh, books in the Bible. The first 39 chapters of Isaiah correlate with the 39 books of the Old Testament. The uh, remaining 27 chapters of Isaiah uh, correlate with the New Testament. So it a change starts in chapter 40 of Isaiah. When you get to the 60th chapter of Isaiah, then uh, you'll start to hear uh, things like, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to preach. Much of what's in chapter 40 on through chapter 66 are words that Jesus said and the disciples referred to. You'll notice he didn't start saying there's going to be a new thing until after chapter 40. Chapter 41, a new thing. Chapter 42, he said a new thing. At chapter 43, God says there's going to be a new thing that's going to happen. A new thing is going to take place. Then after chapter 60, he starts talking about new heavens, new earths, and what's going to take place. In chapter 66, we see a glimpse of God. Heaven is his throne, and the earth is his footstool. We see him coming into the earth, and he's coming for a bride. And the bride, he says, before she travailed, she brought forth. Before her pain came, she was delivered of a man-child. And he goes on to say, who has ever heard of such a thing? Who has seen such a thing? Shall the earth bring forth, he says, in one day, or shall a nation be born? All at once, for as soon as Zion travailed, that word for travailed means to be in labor. It also means to push down, and the word travail means to dance. So as soon as Zion went into labor, as soon as Zion pushed down, as soon as Zion started dancing, then sons and daughters were born. Uh, she brought forth her children. The Lord says, shall I bring the birth and not bring forth? Uh, shall I cause to bring forth and shut up the wounds of the Lord? And that is to say, shall I put something in you and not bring it out of you? He said, if I put it in you, I have the power to bring out of you what I have placed inside. So the church, as the bride of Christ, is set to marry Christ. Uh, you're looking in Revelation chapter 21, starting at verse number 9. Uh, the, uh, the man of God says to John, come, let me show you the city, the bride or the wife of the lamb. She is adorned uh, for as a bride going to meet or coming to see her husband. And he saw New Jerusalem coming down of God uh, from, from God out of heaven. So the New Jerusalem is the bride of Christ.
the, the bride of Christ is, the church of Jesus. You, the church, are the city. You, the church, are the bride. You, the church, are the Zion of the Lord. The church, the bride of Christ, is composed of uh, believers around the world, all ethnicity, all ages, and all classes. Throughout all ages, the church is composed as the bride. This morning at 8, we were dealing with the body, but today I want to talk about uh, this, the, the bride. The bride, you, the church, uh, is set as the bride to bring forth to God. Let me deal with a little prophecy here uh, in relation to the church. Revelation chapter number 12. He says, I saw something great in the heavens. Bless his name. What did you see, John? He says, I saw a woman who is clothed with the sun. And that means that uh, the sun was wrapped around her. Uh, see this as well in imagery. She's wrapped in the sun. The moon is under her feet. She has on her head a crown that has 12 stars, 12 stars. She was uh, about to give birth, and there was uh, another sign that he saw, and that was a great red dragon that was going to kill the man-child that the woman was carrying. But the, as soon as the woman gave birth, the man-child was swooped up to heaven, carried there, and the woman was given great wings uh, to uh, uh, protect her. This man-child, bless your name, Father, will rule with a rod of iron, uh, and he will judge the nations. What is this man-child? What you will notice, brothers and sisters, if we look through the times and consider chronological movements, which are important for us, uh, when we see that, you'll note that from uh, every 2,000 years, God has a son. Glory. Every 2,000 years, God has a son. What do you mean by that? Here's what you'll see. The first of creation, Adam was the son of God, and Adam was set up to be uh, the uh, federal headship, and he was to guide in the earth. But Adam, brothers and sisters, by virtue of the fact of his sin, lost out. When you check it, you'll see that from Adam to Moses is 2,000 years. Bless your name, Jesus. Moses, in Moses, was seen the entirety of the church. His mother was Jochebed, hallelujah, and she brought him forth. His name, Moses, means drawn out, that is to be brought out. When you check that then, from Moses to Jesus is 2,000 years, 2,000 years. And uh, the woman that's involved there is Mary, and uh, she was set to bring forth uh, the Christ child. From the time of Christ up until now, there has now transpired 2,000 years years bless his name so now there is an overcomer or an overcoming mature son the church is going to be made manifest in this hour as the son of god in the age let me deal with this woman real quickly when you see her in Revelation, the 12th chapter, she's clothed with the sun. She has the moon under her feet. She has a crown of 12 stars on her head. Uh, being wrapped in the sun uh, is an indication she's wrapped in glory. She's wrapped in the Shekinah, which means that the woman, bless your name, if she's wrapped in it, then the woman was in Jesus. Glory to God. So the church is in Christ. Please get that. The church is in Christ. The woman was in Jesus. The moon was under her feet. When we look at biblical symbolism, the moon represents powers of darkness. The moon 
cannot be and is not a true light within itself. The moon gets its light from the sun. So the moon is a falsified light. Bless his name. It's a falsification. What are you saying, brothers and sisters? What I need you to see is that the church at end of time will have the moon or powers of darkness under its feet. That's why he tells you the weapons of your warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to pulling down the strongholds, casting down imaginations. The church has got to come into power so that we can subjugate the powers of darkness today. This woman had a crown on her head that was 12 stars. This is a symbol of government. She was crowned with dominion power. She was given power to rule. When you look at the seventh chapter of Daniel, to the church was given dominion in the earth and the kingdoms of the earth. It's important for us to grasp the concept that here is the church today uh, who is styled both as the Son of God and also the Bride of Christ. The church is the man child and the church is the woman. Glory to Jesus. This uh, woman in Revelation, the uh, 12th chapter, is seen threefold. She's first seen as Jochebed, uh, the mother of Moses. She's next seen as Mary, the mother of Jesus. And she is seen as the church that's about to produce for God in the earth. You and I, the church of Jesus, the goal of the bride is to produce for Jesus because we carry the seed of Jesus. If you want to write these down, Isaiah 66, 7 through 8, we've cited that before. The church shall bring forth. Revelation 12 and 5, she brought forth a, a man child. Psalm 2, 8 and 9, this same one that brought forth will rule with a rod of iron. So far we have Isaiah 66, 7 through 8, Revelation 12 and 5, Psalm 2, 8 and 9. Lastly, you want to write down Revelation 19, verse number 15. And this also shows who shall be ruling. Christ has the ruling power. The church is going to be given that power of dominion to be able to rule. He tells you and I. To him that overcometh, Revelation, the second chapter now, verse 26 and 27, he says, To him that overcometh and does my will to the end, uh, accomplishes it to the finish, he says, I will give him authority over the nations. Bless your name. If you will hold on and do the will of God to the end, he said, I'm going to give you authority over the nations. And he will rule with a rod or an iron scepter, and he will dash them to pieces like pottery. Uh, that is to say, anyone that defies the Lord, he says, you shall bring them into subjection and subdue their power. Now, uh, we've established and we've established now that the church is in fact the bride of Christ, and the church is supposed to produce for the bride of Christ. Let me just run quickly through this text that we read today. When we look at our text uh, in the opening, you have two women, bless your name. You have uh, two women. There is the daughter of Jairus, who is 12 years old. And at 12, she's dying, glory to God. Then there's a woman who for 12 years has had an issue which is causing her to lose blood and she's dying. Hallelujah. If you'll see this, one is considered to be unclean and the next is considered to be uh, starting the prime of life but uh, unable because something is in her that's killing her. Glory to Jesus. So Jairus comes to Jesus and says, touch my daughter. Come just lay your hand on her. She's dying. 
Now, one text says he's already dead, but the, uh, when we bring it all together, the Gospels, we show that she died on his way there, and he got to Jesus. She was already dead. Then uh, uh, one of the officials in the house came and told him that your dog's already dead. Don't even bother him. So she died in the process. Uh, so he goes, and Jesus goes to touch her to wake her up. And as he's going through, there is this woman, you know the story, with the issue of blood for 12 years. She touches Jesus, and she's not supposed to be in the crowd because of her uncleanliness. Uh, Leviticus tells us that. Uh, she was not supposed to be there because the flower of age uh, had come upon her and kept coming upon her, which meant that uh, as this happened, please get this, I hope it's not too graphic for you, when the mucus lining inside of the uterus pushed out, it pushed the seed, it pushes the egg out, it pushes the potential, it pushes, pushes the potential to be able to produce out of her. So for 12 years, she's going through month after month, week after week, day after day with her potentiality to produce taken from her 12 years she's going through this and for 12 years the egg is robbed from her and she cannot produce it even if she wanted to produce and she's losing blood hallelujah She's spending all of her money trying to get better. And all the doctors are trying to figure out what's going on. And the Bible says that rather than getting better, she gets worse, which means that her life is deteriorating. The egg is being taken away, and she's losing life in the process. Hallelujah. But watch what she does. Uh, uh, Iris comes and gets Jesus to say, come touch my daughter. But she's in the crowd. She's not supposed to be there. She's not supposed to be around. She's unclean. She's unworthy. Hallelujah to God. She's not supposed to be there. But what she does, she pushes her way through to get to Jesus. She just wants to touch him. She believes that if I touch him, then I shall be made whole. What she's saying She's saying this, if I touch him, my eggs will be restored. If I touch him, my life will be given back to me uh, because life is in the blood. If I touch him, I'm getting my life back. Glory. If I touch him, I'm getting my potential back to be able to produce. Well, you know the story. She touches him, and uh, she's made better. Jesus uh, is told by the uh, official in the house, don't b even bother coming. Uh, she's already dead. Jesus turns to Jairus and says, just have faith. Don't fear. Only believe. He gets there. There's this whole commotion going on. Everybody is stirring, and people are weeping. Uh, that's to say this, that uh, uh, the daughter, and we're told she was his only child and his only daughter, which meant that if she didn't produce for him, there'd be no legacy for him, glory to God, that his name wouldn't continue on. So he needed her to get up. He needed her to have life because if his only daughter, his only child is taken, his name can carry on to the next generation, glory to God. So he needs Jesus to come and touch my daughter. Jesus gets there, you read it, and uh, he puts everybody out, and he touches her and says, Talitha Kumai, which means, uh, to, which means little girl, get up. Uh, that is to say, uh, little damsel or uh, you who are in the prime, get up. Uh, you who are a flower blossoming, hallelujah, get up. And immediately she gets up, and she starts walking around. And Jesus said, give her something to eat. Now, I have read this text on numerous occasions, but Jesus has shown me something there. This text, when it's mentioned, it always mentioned together. That's amazing. Always together. The daughter of Jairus, the woman with the issue of blood, together. Two 
women, one story. Glory to God. Will you say that after me? Two women, one story. Say it again. Two women, one story. Here's the thought, brothers and sisters. You have one lady who has reached an age, but she's still at an age to produce. She's not a teenager. Uh, the thought is she's in her adult life, but for 12 years, she's been battling the potential uh, to produce, not being able to do it. And then for 12, this girl is 12 years old, and she's dying. So you got two people, two ladies that are in a position of death. When you see this from a biblical perspective and symbolism, a woman represents the church. Glory to God. She represents the church. As she represents the church, what you'll find is that the first woman is a pure virgin. She's 12 years old. Glory. She represents a pure virgin, but she's dying. Uh, the second woman represents uh, a hemorrhaging church. That has become fruitless. So uh, what we have is one that is fruitless and the other has fallen asleep. One's fruitless, the other is asleep. Two women, one story. One for 12 years has had a problem and the other in his 12th year now has a problem. But the connection between the two is Jesus. Only he can touch the one that's fruitless and only he can raise up the one that's dying. Glory to God. The church, brothers and sisters, is by virtue a true virtuous bride of Christ. The church, the church can be seen when she does something outside of her relation with God, she can be seen as a prostitute or as the harlot church. When we look in symbolism, you'll see this, that the woman in symbolism symbolizes mature fruit. The state of the woman depicts the condition, is depicted by her condition, whether or not or how she's impacted by the fruit. In other words, I mean this, a healthy woman can produce a healthy fruit. But a damaged woman will produce a damaged fruit. Are you with me? A healthy woman produces healthy fruit. A damaged woman produces damaged fruit. What you mean? A healthy church produces a healthy offspring. But a damaged church will produce a damaged offspring. Glory to God. In addition to the symbolism of a woman in the scripture, her age is important. Her nationality is important. So her, a woman can be seen as a, a newness as strength and as fertility. These two women represent the universal church of Jesus. Hallelujah. They are in their 12th year, which give us the 12th hour of the church. This is a time of government and dominion. Remember, 12, 12. You have 12 years, the woman's hemorrhaging, 12 years, this girl's dying, and the woman in Revelation 12 has a crown with 12 stars. Bless your name, Jesus. Pastor, what do you mean? I mean this. The woman's in a place of dominion, but what's happening is, based on Revelation, she's supposed to have dominion, but there's one in the time she's supposed to have dominion, she can't produce because her egg has been taken away. And the other, at 12, when she's supposed to be living and getting ready to experience marriage and life, then that is being taken from her. But what they need is the touch of Jesus. Glory to God. We are in the 12th hour of the church. And if the church is going to wake up, we got to have a touch from Jesus. Uh, glory to God. We're in the final act for the church. And if the church is going to go forth, we got to have a touch 
from Jesus. I need you to see this. Uh, the difference, I must say, the difference between these two women styled as the church is this. There was one that was awake and she's fruitless. So she knows that if I'm going to produce, I got to go touch him. Hallelujah. Uh, I have life, but my life is ending. Oh, hallelujah. I'm still able to walk, but I'm not supposed to be around. I'm unworthy. I'm not supposed to be here. Glory to God. I've got some stuff going on with me, but if I can touch him. Hallelujah. I still have a little life that's left. I can put one foot in front of the other. I'm in a barren state. I am considered to be unclean. I'm supposed to be outside of the city. I'm not supposed to be a part of general population. But if I can touch him, I shall be made whole. Whereas the other was in a state where she couldn't get up if she wanted to. Hallelujah. She couldn't get out if she desired to. So one decided, let me go touch him. And the other said, I need him to touch me. <laughs> Glory to Jesus. Here's what I see. Hallelujah. Here's what I see in the church today and in this room. We have the woman, the church, seen in two facets. And there are part of you are here that's saying, I just got to get to Jesus. I need him. I just got to, to touch him. Ah, glory. I need to produce. I'm not worthy, but I just need to, to touch him. And there are others who are here saying but they have no life they have no energy they can't even do anything they need Jesus to touch them so a part of you have to decide to get up and go and touch him and another glory to Jesus has to have somebody who loves him enough glory to get the attention of Jesus so Jesus can come and touch them glory to God hallelujah we need somebody to wake up in this last hour hallelujah and decide Jesus I'm coming after you oh I know I know I know that I'm not supposed to be there I know I'm not worthy I know I'm not supposed to be in the crowd I know I got some stuff with me Jesus but I'm coming for you I shall touch you I will press my way through if they push me down, that's all right. If they reject me, that's still okay. I'm going to touch him. Why? Because I need him to wake up something on the inside of me. I need him to give my life back to me. Hallelujah. I'm tired of being on the outside. There has to be a stirring inside of me. I got to get my life back. my glory. My mind's so confused by my issue. I can't even concentrate anymore. But if I can just get to him, I know he can solve everything. I got a whole lot of stuff happening right now. But if I can just get to him, if I can just touch him, things will change for me. Glory to God. And for some of us, we need a Jay Iris in our life. We need somebody. Glory. We need somebody that's an apostolic father who will go forth and say yes Lord the church my daughter's dying but oh God come and touch her come and wake her up glory to Jesus brothers and sisters hallelujah to God my heart's cry I've been saying to Jesus over and over again come and touch us God touch this church we got people Lord who are dying in here and they can't cry out for themselves they need you to come and touch them glory to God oh I know glory to God there are some who are here you can't even put the words together because your life is expiring but fret not yourself I'm praying for you glory to Jesus I'm crying out to God touch Zion Lord touch the brothers Lord touch the sisters God oh Jesus they can't get up even 
even if they wanted to. But, oh, God, if you can come and visit us, oh, you can wake us up, God. Hallelujah. But there are some who are here. You've got to decide. You can't keep living like this. You can't keep staying in the condition that you're in. You can't keep thinking the way that you're thinking. Something has got to change, and that's you. You've got to decide. I'm getting up today. I'm going after him. If I got to press my way through this, I'm getting to Jesus today. If I got to fight my way through the crowd, I'm getting to Jesus today. If they ridicule me on how I praise, I'm still going to get to Jesus. Oh, I may not be refined. Hallelujah. I may not know proper etiquette, but I know this. Jesus, just if I can touch him, one touch from Jesus will change my whole situation. Glory to God. We just need just the one touch. Hallelujah. Just the one touch will wake you up. Just the one touch will stir you. Just the one touch will change your life. One touch, you'll get your life back. One touch. Hallelujah. You'll wake up. One touch. The curse will be reversed. One touch. You'll get up. You'll start walking. Just the one touch. So the prayer is, Lord, wake us up. Wake us up. Wake us up. We can't keep coming Sunday after Sunday and still dying. Wake us up. Wake us up. We can't keep singing songs of worship and it not touch us. Wake us up. Wake us up. We can't keep reading scripture and it do nothing inside. Wake us up. Wake us up. We can't keep fasting and nothing change. Wake us up. Wake us up. Glory to God. Oh God. Wake up our brothers. Wake up our sisters. Wake up our teenagers. We're dying God. We're dying God. But wake us. Stir us. Wake us. We'll rise for you. decided I'm going to touch him and the other couldn't touch him he needed her him to touch her and this is the condition of the church today the part of us who are hemorrhaging hemorrhaging we're supposed to produce but we're in a fruitless grew up, but we're not producing anything. <laughs> Ezekiel 16 shows us that this woman went to church and saw him and told her, you're going to live. He was dying. He stopped by her, took her lunch, washed her, decked her, so she started going out on her own. On her own. When I see the condition of the church, and I see it part of the church that's of age but never produce anything. We got the lepers. We just hindered you. Lepers. Lepers. So every time the word comes to them, they can't, the word can't connect because they're point that all their thoughts are the issue that they have. It 
has taken away their entire focus because they're they're down. They they live with it. For the other, meat is fresh for their diet. the issue can't help her because they're too focused on their their own issue and the one that's up and coming she's dying because there's no one there to nurture her and teach her and love her so the church is in two stages today. Maybe you, 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 you know that you have the issue and you, you know you could produce if the issue was taken care of. I want to need you to start going after Jesus so you can touch him. Because we need a mature church to be able to help nurture next generation that's coming. But a damaged woman will only have a damaged seed of fruit. So if we are damaged, what are we going to do to our next generation? We kill them. God wants to touch you today. There is an awakening that's happening of Christ to the bride of Christ, to the son of God. And the church has to produce. And you and I, that is this. It's going to be more than just a song. Really. It's going to be more than just the song and, and, and the dance. The church is going to have to bring forth something for God. The church is going to have to be productive pray with you today. <clears throat> you know where you are. I've just given you a picture of the church in two stages. You know where you are. Some of you don't know enough of scripture to be able to fight off the devil. Because this is all new to you. So it's difficult for you to do spiritual warfare because you just come into this. There's others of you, you've heard and you know how to do spiritual warfare, but you're so damaged that you can't fight a devil off, even if you wanted to, because your whole focus is the issue. There's a touch that's going to be necessary. One, by the one that really wants him to change them. touch that person so you don't, doesn't know much about them, <clears throat> but they're dying. He's going to raise them up. It's going to be a strength to the kingdom of God. Will you stand, please? Jesus, 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 Jesus. Wake me up. Ha. Lord, don't pass me by. To see your arrival, it's right before my eyes. Wake me up. Um, <laughs> Lord, don't pass. Thank you, Lord. Don't. It's you that is the woman that's damaged. And I'm saying the woman, I'm referring to male, female, and the church. If that's you, that first group, will you come, come, come? From wherever you are, come, come, come. Your arrival, 
it's right before my eyes. Wake me up. Oh. Lord, don't pass, pass me by. Don't leave me on a Come on, sing those words to him. Wake me up. Wake me up. Lord, don't pass me by. I want to see. Right before. Right before. This time through, will you sing it from your soul? Sing it from your soul. Wake me. Lord, don't pass me by. I want to see you. Right before, right before. Please, God, wake me up, wake me up. Whatever you do, don't pass me by. Please don't leave me sleeping. Open up. For those of you who are here, that woman pursued Jesus. She pressed in. Hallelujah. She didn't wait for Jesus to touch her. She touched him. She pursued him. Glory. Will you take that initiative and pursue him in this prayer? Pursue him. Pursue him. Pursue him in this prayer. Let your words touch his throne. Let your words touch the hem of his garment. Let your words pull in his robe. Let your words reach him. Yes, God, yes, God. I'm broken, but I'm coming to you. I'm damaged, but I'm coming to you. I got an issue, but I'm coming to you. Oh, hey. I need you, God. I need you. My life is falling apart, but I need you. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. It's taking everything inside of me to press through just to give to you. I'm unworthy, but I'm coming. I don't qualify, but I'm coming. I shut up. I should be cast out, but I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. Hey, hey, have mercy on me, have mercy on me, have mercy on Narasata, Ilevayanda, Uravasaya, yeah, yeah, hallelujah. Those of you who have the Holy Ghost, Begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. That's where your strength is. That's where your strength is. Begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Shata. Udaba Sande. Yadaba Sanda. Ekadaba Sa. Ilabanda Saba. Ekondaba Sia. Yababa Se. Ekandaba Sa. Yabokura. Ekande. Laba Sa. Yababa Se. Okondo. Yekende. Shata. Make it. Uda, Yama, Sata. Come on, Holy Ghost. Come on, Holy Ghost. Come on.
Holy Ghost. Come on, Holy Ghost. Yeah, 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 yeah. Break up the battleground today, God. Break it up, my cat. Hey. Yeah, God. Let this touch be the touch of the light, God. Let this touch be the touch of their life. The touch that they needed. The touch that changed them. Yeah. Let this touch wake them up. Hey. Hey. Come on, go after him. Go after him. Go after him. Don't be satisfied. Go after him. Pursue him. Hey, until it all changes. Until you're made whole. Pursue him until you're made whole. Let the touch reconstruct your heart. Let the touch reconstruct your life. Hey! One more time. Turn our barrenness to fruitfulness. Hey, lift the curse of our life. Watching the service online. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Glory. God is coming into your room. He's coming into your house. He's touching you now. Yeah, Holy Ghost. Hey, right where you are. All over the globe. He's touching you, yeah. Yeah. Right in that hotel room. He's touching you. Right in your office, right in your living room, right in your bedroom. He's changing you right now in the day. Hallelujah. Now there are others of you. Like you're rather than new. All oh, this is new. You just need somebody to, to, to yoke up with you, to touch you. So what I'm asking is this. Hallelujah. Because the church is the body of Christ and the bride of Christ. When we touch hands with one another, that's the touch of Jesus being instituted in the world. So will you please, those who are standing in the pews, those who are up here, grab someone by the hand. If you're standing back there and you just want to come closer to grab somebody's hand up here, come on, come on, come on, come on. Ah, hear me. Be sure to grab somebody's hand that has some life in them. 
Grab somebody's hand that has some life in them. That, ah, yeah. That's the only way Jesus was able to raise the girl up is that he had life in him. Oh, yo, oh. grab somebody's hand that has life in them. Oh, that I shot. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we say to you today, arise. And we say to you today, arise. And we say to you today, arise. Wake up, wake up, wake up. Wake up, wake up, wake up. Wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Yayalasha. Darabakanda. Urabasha. Iramandese. Urabasaya. He's waking your family up. He's waking your mind up. He's waking your house up. He's waking that anointing up. He's waking that dream up. He's waking the church up. He's waking the church up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You shall live. You shall walk. You shall be nervous. You shall have strength. Hey! Hey! Tamasa. Ukabasa. Ekandara. Okotarabosa. Iandarasa. Ekande. Usaba. Sandayata. Ekande. Saba. Yeah, Lord. Wake us up, God. Wake us up. Wake us up. Sabaya. Ekandara Saba. Wake us. Wake us. Wake us. Come on, Zion. Travail. Come on, Zion. Travail. For as soon as Zion travailed, sons and daughters were born. Yay! Yeah. Push. 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 delivered. Push until it's fully delivered. Push. Push till the breakthrough comes. Push. Push.
Will you lose those hands and begin to praise God? Life is back into you. Praise Him. Hey, you didn't let me die like that. You didn't leave me like I was. You came to me. You touched me. You woke me up. It's all because of Jesus I'm alive. Hey. It's all because the blood of Jesus Christ. It's all because of Jesus I'm alive. It's all because of Jesus I'm alive. It's all because the blood of Jesus Christ. Woo! That covered me and raised the dead man's life. Woo! It's all because of Jesus I'm alive.
Yeah. Oh, this none of us shot. There's some life here today. There is some life here today. Hey. Oh. How do you know it? We can build a pulse of the Holy Ghost. Touch me. Oh, he touched me. I know the joy that floods my soul. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You can return back to your seat if you can. Oh, if you're not through yet, you can stay. Oh, Jesus. If you don't feel that pulse yet, you can stay. Oh, Jesus. Oh, the joy. That floods my soul. Something happened, and now I know. Hey. Come on, brothers. I need some brothers up here. I need some brothers. I need some brothers. Go away. Come quickly. Come quickly. Go away. Come on, Navasa. Let's pray with our brother. Come on, pray with him, pray with him, pray with him, brothers. Pray with him, pray, push, pray, push, pray. Yeah, yeah, yeah.
Thank you, God. The Lord is stirring his church around the world. He is stirring his church around the world. And the church, hear what I'm telling you. The church of Jesus is waking up. The church of Jesus is waking up. His church is waking up. Oh, my they're coming from the north, south, east, and west. They're coming. They're coming. He, I'm a, he's drawing his church together. He's bringing them all. He's assembling them from the four corners of the earth. And the four winds of God are breathing unto these that are slain. And they're rising up an exceeding great army. They're, hiya, they're getting up out of the graves. Glory. Uh, they're stirring to their feet. They're shaking off the dust. They're getting loosed from that which had them bound. And they're moving into action. Oh my. They're moving into action. Jesus, thank you, Lord. They're coming, coming. They are coming. All shapes, all sizes, all ethnicities. They're coming, they're coming. Bruised, battered, broken. They're coming, they're coming, they're coming. Hear what I tell you, church, that hallelujah, what God is assembling, it's a final harvest of all kinds, all kinds of produce, all kinds of produce. <laughs> Some of them, their previous history is that they were tatted up, they're coming in, hallelujah, tats and all, and God's going to use them mightily. Hallelujah. Some will come that had multiple piercings. Uh -uh. If you're stuck with appearance, it's going to mess you up. But he has a harvest that's coming in of all kinds. All kinds. All kinds. Bless Jesus. Hear what I'm telling you? They'll come in. They'll have head wrapped up. Glory. Uh-huh. Looking like they came from an, another culture. But Jesus is bringing them in. Oh, my. Be not alarmed. Don't be afraid. Oh, I'm telling you, they're coming. They are coming. 
they're coming, they're coming, they're coming. Hallelujah. Some have been incarcerated, others have been on drugs. Oh, some have been in, involved in the Wicca. Hallelujah. But they're coming, they're coming. Some will have been atheists, others will have been agnostics. But they're coming, they're coming. Hallelujah to God. They're coming. Hallelujah. He's going to use you, the church, uh, to breathe life into them. Oh, hear me. Some of them, as they come, they would have been struggling with lesbianism, but they're coming in. And the power of our God is so strong, he's going to change them right in our midst. Some will have alterations to their sexuality, but they're coming. They are coming. They're coming. And Jesus said, the power of the Holy Ghost is going to change them. Hey. God, I thank you today. Oh. Oh. And hear this, hear this. This is the second day of June 2013. The devil thought that he took our men out. He thought he took the male equation out of the church. But there's an influx of men. Now, I need you ladies, I need you ladies to confirm this by saying this as loud as you can. I need, I need you to say this as loud as you can in the atmosphere. Say, give us our fathers back. Give us our sons back. Give us our husbands back. Right now. In Jesus' name. I need every male, every male, every male in this room to answer the call for these ladies. Can we do that? I need every male, every male to lift your voice and say, we're coming back. In Jesus' name. What did you just do? Ladies, you just gave a call for every father, every son, glory, and every husband to return to the house of God. And the men speaking as witnesses and representatives, they answered the call and declared, we are coming back. So I'm to tell you, glory to Jesus. You better look for it. Look for it. It's happening. They're coming. Coming straight out the gang, but they're coming. That's Shamakata. Glory. Ah! Coming straight out the detention center, but they're coming. Coming straight out of the crack house, but they're coming. Ah! Coming straight from that corporate office, but they're coming. They're coming. They're coming. They're coming. They're coming. Oh, yeah, Shema. The front line shall be restored. The front line shall be restored. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise his name. Hallelujah. Now, 
I need you to be here on Tuesday. I need you to be here on Tuesday. We're going to talk about knowing the time. Knowing the time. We're going to deal with time on Tuesday. We'll deal with the watches on Tuesday so you'll understand what's happening in the various hours. Um, biblically, we'll see the significance of that. Uh, we'll talk about uh, the seasons. We'll deal with the years of the Lord. Uh, we'll talk about the uh, a Kairos moment. We'll deal with that. Uh, we'll deal um, with the Kronos moment. We'll talk about that because the, um, the, the a Kairos moment has to intersect with a Kronos moment. Because the Kairos carries the rain. Yes, Jesus. What do you mean? There's an appointed time with an appointed word that has to meet the chronos time. But if you're not in on schedule in chronos time, then that Kairos moment with a rhema word can't meet you. So what will happen is the Kairos moment will happen and you were busy being delayed. And because you weren't on schedule, my glory, the Kairos dropped the rhema and the rhema was left empty because nobody was there to receive it but the devil is a lie God is causing the church to redeem the time glory, you're ah, yeah, Sunday, you're about to catch up all that you lost out on and no seed no mantle shall fall empty the ground. All of them do it. They don't cause me to catch up with that. And the church shall bring forth for our Lord God. Hallelujah. We're um, heading to Cambridge uh, today. Oh God, we're finished. Uh, we're going to uh, we're asking as many as possible to go along with us. We want to be a blessing uh, to the Pentecostal Temple Church family and the pastor there, um, Pastor uh, Briscoe. Uh, and so the bus is made available for all those who like to get on the bus. We're also driving directions for those who like to drive um, along with us. We do have a snack prepared for those uh, who are going along. I think it's about 80, it's 80, 80 lunches, something like that. Yeah. All right, something like that. Um, and uh, so we're asking this, um, parents, those of you who have children, um, if your child is under the it is 12 and under 12 and under please get the bags to them if your child is 12 uh, and under please get the bag uh, to them uh, but I need a designee on board somebody who's riding the bus uh, to be um, our collector on the bus to walk up and down the aisles and, and make sure while the bus is moving we, we collect all we can put trash bags on there because we don't need that bus clean all right Thank you. Thank you for those hands that went out. I appreciate that. I need you to uh, get those bags to Sister Judy. And uh, while we're in transit and just probe the time, um, give her enough chance to eat and collect the bags so that we um, we don't leave a mess. Um, they have uh, condiment packages uh, for, I think, um, yes, for the turkey. And uh, you, you have mustard, ketchup, uh, mustard and mayonnaise. All right. And they're in packets. So I'm going to ask you to do this, okay, because we're a civilized people, uh, and we respect God's things. Uh, if you use the condiment packets, don't throw it on the floor, okay? Uh, put it in the paper bag, please. Thank you so much. Um, but we, cause we, want to, we want to keep the bus in nice condition. Um, so do that. Please don't leave it in the seats. Uh, and the purpose of the seat, put it in the bag, and uh, so we can put it in the, in the trash bags. And thank you so much um, for that. Since I said that, then those of you who, you know, you, you, you need um, to refresh yourself sometimes in the services because of perhaps the medication that you're on, uh, and uh, so you need to stay hydrated, so you bring bottles of water. Um, we're asking those who do that, um, put these, you know, if you bring it, take it to the transfer. That, that's simple enough, all right? Thank you so much. Uh, we... We know that perhaps most of those who, are, who need it because of medication are taking it for receptacles, those who don't need it, who are bringing it. But if you'll do that, please, I greatly appreciate that. So we don't have an excess amount of bottles that, that lie around, um, and I greatly appreciate that. Uh, shall we also? Those of you who are going as well, um, if 
we will um, use the facilities, and then I think the buses are already it's already outside, I believe. Uh, and so you can use the facility. Shake us your hand. It's not out yet, but it shall be out soon because uh, we're ready to leave shortly. Um, so do that. And um, where are the where are the bag lunches? So you don't have to go downstairs to get that. We're out front, uh, and the, uh, so you can go along uh, with us. And then, of course, there'll be food once once we get there. Give us a hand. We got to go on. <coughs> now may God bless you and keep you. Cause His face to shine upon you. Will be gracious unto you. Give us countenance and be peace. In Jesus' name, Amen.